Yep. Uh, this okay? Yep. So hello everyone. Today I would like to present one of my recent projects, uh, the Risu 64 and the things related to it. Sorry for reading the script so I can meet the time constraints here. Um, a little bit about myself. I'm a digital IC designer at Zero ASIC, and I have uh, various digital or embedded systems related side projects I do during my side time, uh, spare time. Uh, during the last lecture, up, I presented the Verilog Boy project, which I did during my undergraduate as a course project. Uh, it is a re-implementation of the Game Boy system. Uh, it's sort of a, like a logical continuation. I'm trying to build a fantasy console this time. Uh, the project I'm presenting today is the CPU of it, uh, called Risu 64. It has a six-stage dual-issue pipeline implementing the RV64IM instruction set. I call it non-blocking because uh, uh, it fully uses out-of-order write-back with no reordering logic. So a long latency instruction doesn't block the execution of uh, non-dependent instructions. This is possible thanks to the fact that RISC-V doesn't have any instructions that generate an exception late in the execution. So precise exception is still implemented. Um, as long as you have issues in order, that's all fine. This does introduce some issues. However, for example, like a read after write uh, hazard is not a real issue here. Um, for the result, for the highest IPC configuration, it gets like 4.3 core mark per megahertz with best effort, which is actually not that great considering it only allocates one cycle for the RAM axis. But further optimization is probably something for the future. And I'm happy with the result as I pr this is my first RISC V project, and the whole thing was uh, written from scratch in like three weeks. I also implemented with Yosis and Open Road using a silicon compiler targeting the Sky 130B process node. Without cache, it achieves like 80 megahertz Fmax, but drops to 50 megahertz if cache is enabled. Um, with the cache tab comparison becoming the critical path there. About the next steps, um, other than all the possible microarchitectural optimizations, uh, I really hate the verboseness of the Verilog during writing it. One obvious solution is to use higher uh, level language such as Chisel, which I'm already using Chisel in some of the projects that I can talk about today. Uh, but I also want to explore options to making it like less verbose while still keeping in the Verilog. A common solution in the industry, as far as I know, is using probe processors to generate code. And this is exactly what I'm doing here. I used a PyHP, uh, like in the Open Python project, and developed my own library for generating common things in the Python. Um, of course, a game console wouldn't be complete without graphics capabilities, so I'm also designing a CP sorry, simple 3D accelerations uh, as part of the plan, but that's for another time, so thanks for listening. Thank you. Thanks.